Welcome everybody and this is our very first podcast as the Villa Generals and we will be your three main hosts of this podcast. Um, so first of all, uh, I'll introduce myself. Um, I've been a Villa fan all my life, season ticket holder, uh, can't wait to get back. Um, been through the ups and the downs, probably not as much as, uh, as the two uh, gents who joined me. Um, but yeah, uh, we've got some interesting views uh, and stick with us. Um, but Aaron, do you want to give us a, a bit of a, an intro to yourself? Yeah, no problem. Absolutely buzzing to do this, to be fair. Uh, it's been in the making for some time, I think. So it's good to finally do it. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm Aaron. I've been involved in the Villa community on Twitter probably for oh dear, six, seven, eight years, probably now in and out. Um, and built up a really good network of friends on there. Been a Villa fan since I was ooh, six, seven years old um, and uh, followed the Villas, uh, you know, since then. Um, I love football. Uh, I'm not particularly a footballer, as in playing, but I certainly love to watch the game. Uh, hugely been involved in coaching at quite a high level for a lot of my career, um, particularly in the women's game as well, which is uh, something we can bring to this, I guess, at some point. Um, but yeah, ace to be here, mate. Um you know, we've had a we've had a, an interesting season, so it'd be good to discuss it for sure. And T, yeah, nickname is T, um, so everybody knows me. Uh, really excited to get us all together, as in the generals, which is Lions. Um, yeah, let's crack on, guys. We've got so much to talk about. Yeah, I'm, I'm buzzing to talk about it. I'm sure you two are. Let's let's crack on. Yeah, I mean, to be honest with you, I think when we've come up with this idea, um, I think initially it was all very positive. Now I'm going to be using it as a bit of a therapy session. Um, but, you know, as, as such it is, as being a Villa fan, I'm afraid. But I think uh, to start us off, um, I think let, let's talk about current form. Um, because me personally, I, you know, we're all very vocal on, on social media. And, and I've got to say, I'm since the turn of the year and, and I know people want to sort of point the finger at Jack and I know sort of Smith was sort of spoken about it a little bit today and yesterday, but I don't think it is anything to do with Jack. You, you lose a bit of creativity. Of course you do. Cause he's one of the best in, in Europe at the moment. Um, but it's not down to that. I just think that we, we, we're sitting back too much. We're inviting pressure. To be honest with you, we, we, we almost look a little bit like last season, if I'm being honest. Uh, I mean, what's your thoughts Terry? Um, same as you, mate, and now we're going to upset a few people. But that's what the podcast is all about, isn't it? Views and opinions. Um, if you think, I, I don't think it's progression at the moment. If we stay, if we stay eleventh and tenth, that's progression. If we carry on the form as we're going, you know, we're going to tumble, tumble. It's nothing to do with Jack Grealish, is it? Really, it doesn't help having a, such a guy with high stats. But when you can't make two yard passes, and and you can't make tackles, and and, and marvelous Lacamba. Is a defensive midfielder, but against Man City, he didn't make one single worthwhile tackle. There's something's fundamentally wrong. Progression, progression for me is um, not spending two hundred sixty million pounds to come two two places higher the following season. If we stay if we stay as we are, hat off is progression. Yeah. But I'm with you, mate. It, it's something's fundamentally wrong at the moment, and it's got to stop tomorrow. Aaron. Yeah, for me, it's been a tale of two sides, hasn't it, for the uh, for the season so far? You know, we've got off to a fantastic start. Uh, expectations are well and truly smashed, to be honest with you. I think every fan was living living in cloud nine. Um, and then Christmas hit. Uh, Jackie Boy got out, and I think Jack was a very easy excuse for for everybody just to say, "Oh, we're we're not the same team without Jack." That's that's ridiculous to comment on that, really, because we, we can be. We can be the same team without Jack. And other players need to start stepping up. They haven't done that. You can't be relying on one player. Yes, OK, he's your captain. But we've got other good leaders in the team that can, you know, quite happily step in and lead, lead the boys. Um, but I haven't seen that, really. I've not seen that leadership, really. Um, whether it's coming from Mings, Martinez... Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know where it is, really. And, and for me, the midfield has been our biggest issue. We are, we are flat. We are dead in the middle of that, in that middle of field. You know, the three players that have been uh, swapped and changed in there, we still haven't found a, um, a working system. You know, every cog that gets put in and replaced and changed and nothing's working. And, uh, you know, ultimately, we have to have a good midfield in order to, to push forward. You know, it's huge. It's a massive part of the game, midfield play. And, and we haven't had that. And, and for me, it's, it's been disappointing. And we have, we have slumped. We have slumped. And I agree, you know, it's not, it's not progression anymore. Um, it's almost regression in a way. And, and that's, that's worrying. And I think 
Tomorrow, we need to put it right, massively so. Tomorrow is a prime opportunity for us to do that. And if we don't, it could get, it could get quite miserable. Uh, we don't want to be finishing the season having not won a game since February. Yeah. You know? I, mean, um, I mean, what from my, my point of view, how, how big of a game is, uh, is tomorrow for Smith? Massive. I mean, it's, it's massive. And, and, and don't get me wrong, you know, at the moment, the three of us aren't bashing Smith. No. Um, but it's a, I think it's personally his biggest game for a while tomorrow. Yeah. Um, he's got to, he, we've, we've got to turn up. If you don't, if you can't turn up against uh, against the Albion and a great opportunity to put the final rusty nail in their coffin and send them down, then we really are. We we really have got to worry about Smith going forward yeah. because it's it, we've just got to turn up tomorrow. And I, and I, and if we play four three three tomorrow, Albion will beat us. Yeah, I, I mean, from my point of view uh, of playing sort of certain different levels of football, I've always said the big games. You don't need a big speech, a big uproar in training in the week. It's a big game. You get it up for yourself. If you, if you as a professional footballer cannot get up for a game like Baggies, um, especially in the form that we've been in, sort of right a few wrongs. Obviously, you know, every football community is exactly the same. When sort of teams playing well, everyone's on side. Obviously, our form's not been great. So there's been a few sort of comments. You know, tomorrow is a, per, you know, don't, let's get it straight. Baggies aren't a great team. I know they've had a decent bit of form, but it's only because they're going at it and they've got no pressure on them anymore. They've got nothing to lose. Now, you know, in the start of the season, I always felt that we we played better against the bigger teams because they didn't fear us. They came at us and left a lot of space for us to go and exploit, set traps. We actually sort of came into a little bit unstuck when you played against teams like Brighton, against people like Burnley, West Ham at the start of the season where they were kind of to and fro in. Um, now, we've got a chance tomorrow because West Brom have got to come at us. They've got to win the game. It's simple as that. So we've got a chance where we're going to pick spaces. And, you know, we, we speak all the time and, and, and sort of watching them against um, in the week where you saw two up front against them. They just got absolutely battered with it, with, with Leicester. And we were both saying, if you're a manager watching that game, we've got enough in that squad to go, you know what? We need to go to up top. He's, yeah. got, it, he's got it tomorrow. And, you know, I mean, Aaron's... Uh, pointed out on, on, on Twitter, we haven't got any wingers. So if we haven't got any wingers, then you change your formation. Yeah. It's yeah. simple as it's simple as that. Yeah. Do what Les do what Leicester did. Yeah. Do what Leicester yeah, did. Yeah, yeah. For me, I, for me, it's so important that if, if we if we haven't got the players to play in the positions that we need them to play in, don't start it. putting players that don't play there into those exactly positions. right. To try to try something. We haven't got time to try now. We need to really pull our fingers out of our asses and, and, and get some results before the end of the season. You know, Jacob Ramsey on the left wing was not a good tactical move. You know, yes, he's a talented little boy, but to ask him to play on the left hand side of that midfield well, wasn't wasn't against wasn't City. Yeah. Again, yeah, and, City, and, yeah. and stick and stick with that bloody four three three like he always does. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, and this is the thing, like you say, because we haven't physically got any wingers at the minute. He's putting square pegs in round holes, isn't he? He's doing what Bruce did effectively. I mean, at one point, Bruce was playing three fullbacks at centre-half. And, you know, if, if he's not careful, because, you know, from my point of view, again, I'm trying not to bash Smith, but he's starting to sound a little bit like Bruce in his interviews. It's, you know, you could literally record it and just play it against uh, after every game at the minute because it's, oh, they were fantastic and they did this really well and we were frustrated because we stayed in the game. And, you know, I, I, I've been a big advocate of Smith and, and, and I want it to work. I want him to take us to the next level and I hope he can. Um, I just I just think he's limited. I do. Um, I mean, what, what's your thoughts on Smith at the minute? I, I think for me, Smith, Smith is a, he's a learning manager. He's never played at this level before. And I think for, you know, the players that we've got at the club, as well as Smith, you know, it's a learning curve and this is a brand new experience. This is a putting your foot in at the real deep end and seeing how good you are. Mm -hmm. And I think Smith deserves a little bit more time to prove that um, he has got what it takes. I think, yeah. I think that is, you know, he ha we have to give him that. Um, you know, we, we've seen the quality that he can, he can bring to this club and the way that we play and the way that we can win games. Um, but long term, something has to change, I think, sooner rather than later. Um, and he's got to accept the fact that he's learned something and then implement it. At the minute, we're still very much learning, and I think that's why um, we're just not getting the results because he's not he's not he's not learning. You know, he's not learning from uh, of, of, of what's happening in previous games. I think, yeah. and, and we have to start to up top tomorrow for me. We have to. 
What's your prediction? Do you think he does or not? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, yeah. I don't I think know. He, yeah. Do you know what? I think he will. I'm going to be yeah. bold and I'm going to say no. I think he sticks 4-3-3. Three, three. Okay. Well, we lose the game. You know, and, and this is this is my... I mean, you know, I get it. Like, Jack comes out of the team. And I, I actually think in that adversity, you know, we should have the mentality at the club. And we did feel like we did have that at the start of the season where people like Barkley should have gone, you know what? This is my time to shine now. Uh, and I'm not just pointing at Barkley. You know, you've got McGinn, who's a fan favourite. Um, you've got Traore, who came with a big fee. Uh, you've got Watkins, who, you know, I think under kind of what how we've been playing of like, I think he's done as, as well as, as, as I could have hoped, really. But there's a lot of players in there for me. I think you, you just haven't taken your chance. You could have really become a cult hero. Um, and I just don't think enough of them, or if any, have taken the chance at all, to be honest. If you remember Smith last season, he tinkered around the two centre-halves. That's the, mm-hmm. I, think, I think that's why we struggled a bit last season because he kept swapping it. Engels, Concert, Mings, how and he kept swapping it. And he's done exactly the same. But this year, he's messed around with that, that, the key midfield, the three yeah. in the midfield. Yeah. And, you know, consequently, we're going to struggle because people in and out of team, it's just not right. It's all right changing your formation one week and change it to adapt to the team, but it's just not doing it. Mm-hmm. And, and I... I I, I do worry for Smith. I want him at the club. I want him to carry on the journey. Absolutely. But I think he's a goner if he carries on. Yeah, I mean, I, I had a bit of a think about it the other day and I thought our form or our midfield, if you like, because I think that's where it is. Our engine room's completely stopped. Um, and I feel like there's there's a bit of that when Sanson came into the club. Do you think that's unsettled the three in the midfield? No, I, 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 I don't think so. I don't think no. Sanson's had that much of an impact. And that's probably one of the reasons that we've not done what we were hoping to do. I don't think the impact's been there from Sanson. You know, I, I, I saw the quality. We all saw the quality when he came on in those in those two games, the last 15 minutes or so. Um, and, and then he's gone and bust himself. And I think he's he's going to struggle to play again this year, probably. You know, yeah. pre-season is, is when he'll be back with us again, I imagine. Um, and I... I I think what Dean Smith wanted was to Sanson come in and change change the midfield, and that hasn't yeah. happened. He wanted yeah. Sanson to come in and give him absolutely every reason to go, right, you've got to start. You're exactly what I've been looking for to change this midfield, mm-hmm. and that hasn't happened. So he's gone back to those that he trusts. McGinn, unsubbable. You know, McGinn is unsubbable. You know, there are plenty of games that he should have really come off for something different and hasn't, and he stayed on. Yeah. Dougie Louise, I think since COVID outbreak, has just just lost himself a little bit. I, I don't know what's happened with Dougie. You know, there's a quality player in there, but he does look like his head's dropped a little bit. Don't know why particularly. Um, the Camber always puts a shift in, but he's not He's not world-class. He's not the quality that we need in that middle. Um, Ramsey, again, he's a good player, but he's not the quality that we need in that middle. Um, yeah, it's, it's difficult. It's really difficult. And, and, and the constant chopping and changing hasn't helped our case at all. No. You know, um, I think Ollie is the only player beyond the the heart beyond the defense that stayed stayed in place you know yeah. um it's not good it's not good for the mentality to to wanting to go out and win big games and there's no coincidence that all the big teams we've done particularly well against because the shackles have been off yeah. and we started on the front foot because these are big teams and we want to go and put a performance in it's the smaller teams and the teams in and around that relegation zone or the bottom half we've really struggled against we've just not put in a shift boys haven't been <laughs> Boys haven't been bothered, you know. Yeah. Um, I mean, I mean, from my point of view, sort of looking at the Man City game, and listen, it was probably the best I'd seen City play for months, and 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 that's probably a, a little bit down to us being so far off them as well. But when we went, when they went down to ten men, um, it for the first probably well until Cash went off. It, it felt a little bit like we were being progressive again. We were on the front foot. It, you know, it looked like we were going to score rather than them. And I thought to myself, why is it taken for someone to get sent off to actually go and take the game? Because that's what we didn't used to do that. Like, look at Arsenal. Look at Leicester at the start of the season. Uh, Liverpool start of the season. We went and we went and gone. That's where they're vulnerable. That's how we're going to win the game. Whereas it, it feels a little bit like now. It's like, let's draw the pressure out and they'll see if we can catch them on the counter. And, you know, that's not a tactic really. See, the thing, the thing is as well, Drew, it's like we're all slagging the wingers off, but we've seen our style of play. You know, we're hoofing it, we're hoofing the ball up to Watkins. We're not using the wingers at all. Yeah. Tra- a Torre, the Maverick, I, he, he's a frustrated figure because he's not getting a service. Yeah. And when he does get the service, he does something. But we've got, it's, it's, 
I don't know what's wrong. Smith's just totally changed all the good work for me in, in, in a flash. The second half of the season, it, 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 it's totally, totally changed. It. And, I, I, and I, I've never seen such a change of dynamics in a team yeah. for a long, long time. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I kind of look at this and I think, you know, at the start of the season, I personally think some of the teams I really liked watching were Brighton, Villa, Southampton, um, and obviously City, of course. But and I, I look at them and I think even though Southampton and Brighton are not getting the results, they can still play the same way. They still play on the front foot, you know, pressuring each other. They get a lot of shots on and goal. You know, I think they're, Brighton's expected goals is like, you know, one of the best in the league. And that, you know, as a fan, you can be like, you know what, at least they're giving it a go. I know we're not getting the results. We just haven't got the players at the minute. Whereas I just feel like the, the style of play, like you say, like Dougie is just just dropped out of our midfield completely. And it's just like, what has happened? What, what, what do you think's going on behind the scenes? It's, it, it's just, it's not, I think for me, people say, oh, well, it's lack of confidence. It's not, it, how can it be lack of confidence when you can't make one yard passes? Yeah. Yeah. It's got nothing to do with confidence, making a one-yard pass mm-hmm. or, or challenging for a header or challenging for a tackle. It's just something's really gone wrong. And yeah, it's just like, it's it's about, like they don't want to play for the manager. No, yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that you know, there, there are glimpses of that I've, I've seen with some of the players. You know, it's like, you know, who, who, are, they, who are they really playing for now? It's, it, and I don't think sometimes it's the gaffer, you know. Sometimes I think it's like that, that element's gone. Mm. There's, a, there's a real frustrated downbeat kind of attitude you know as soon as they get on the field they're not quite sure of whether they want to be there or not and you know uh, and that's that's hard enough coming from players um like Barkley who who aren't permanent transfers who aren't permanent players at the club who are on loan who can quite happily you know uh, bugger off at the end of the season not have to worry about it but players that are contracted to the club who we relied on so very heavily in that first kind of uh part of the season who were you know, essential to what we were doing and were, were being, you know, touted about with 20 million, 30 million, 40 million price tags. All Arsenal are interested, Real Madrid are, you know, that's gone. That, 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 that was players. Have I, um, I have a theory on it. I thought about this this morning because something is wrong. My mm. theory is JT's off. Now, JT, I know for a fact, is the link between the player and the manager. Yeah. So if you've got a main, main first team Assistant, assistant manager, I think he's going. He's, he's got a job lined up somewhere. I don't think he'll be with us next season. I'll be amazed if he is. And that's the only thing I can think of is why all of a sudden the players think, well, we might as well give up then, don't we? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it is a strange one for me. Um, you know, and, and, and I, it could be easy to say there's too many, too many cooks uh, because we've got a lot of coaches now, but it was working at the start of the season. So, like you say, unless there's been they're rubbing each other up the wrong way now and there's too many opinions being thrown in and everyone's got wants to put their, their 10 pence in. I don't know. But, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I just, like you say, my big concern is that I think last season we finished the season by taking good form into this year. What I'm worried about is that we're going to start taking bad form into, totally agree. into next. Totally agree. And, you know, like you, I mean, as bad as we've been playing, you know, if Leeds lose to Manu, which is conceivable, that's not out of the question, and we beat Baggies, we can go back to ninth with a game in hand. But Drew, we, we need to sell the club. The, the club needs to be sold to players yeah. at the moment. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know yourself playing a high standard to another team. Oh, if you've got a choice of teams, you won't want to be coming to the Villa at the moment because mm. the, the style of play, mm-hmm. it's, just dread, it's dreadful. Yeah, you go yeah, to yeah, West yeah. Ham or Brighton, not Brighton, you go to West Ham, Leicester, who I think are probably our main comp- uh, competitors for next season. Yeah. On, on who who who, who player wise we want. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's and this is the thing, you know. I think, of course, we spent a lot of money, and we and if you're a Villa fan, you understand why we've spent so much money, and and a lot of it might not have come off. If you're an outsider, Villa have spent X, Y, and Z, and they're not, they're not good enough. Well, that's just small mindedness, and and people just you know because they don't want to understand it, and we get it. Um, I honestly still think we're two windows behind Leicester before we're, where we can be where they are. Um, but like you say, we have progressed, but we have missed a massive opportunity this season. There's so many teams off the ball, like Liverpool, Man U have had patches this season. Chelsea have had a really poor start to the season. Tottenham have been woeful. I mean, you know, for me personally, I genuinely, genuinely think that you know, if you look back at the, the games that we've lost, bar maybe two or three, um, 
we've thrown the games away. We haven't, we've beat ourselves. We haven't let them to, you know, come and being beaten properly. Uh, and that, I think that's what's a big frustration for me. Like that we, we just haven't given ourselves enough of a chance in some of those games. You know what I mean? The thing is, if, if a team's if a team's not on four, you can guarantee if the Villa play them, they'll find four, mm. and that has to thunder has to stop. That has to stop. You know, look at Liverpool; they won a brilliant run of form. They played Real Madrid, and then we got battered, we got battered by him. Yeah. You know, man, same as Man City. I thought there was an opportunity there. Same as Burnley, there was an opportunity there. You know, the only one I thought a surprise was uh, this season was Leeds away. Yeah. And we were, and to be honest with you, we were particularly very good against Leeds away. I didn't no. think. No. Yeah. I mean, yes. I mean, if you look back, that's our last two wins, isn't it? Leeds and Fulham. And let's face it, we're the poorer team in both of those games. Uh, and that's what I mean about it's worrying because you know, again, yeah, we went up against Chelsea, uh, City. We yet yeah, we went up against Liverpool, but I, I never felt we were going to win. You know, my dad, my dad said to me at half time, "Would you take a draw now?" And I said, "Absolutely, I'll take a draw against um, Liverpool." And I'm thinking, you know, they're a poor team at the minute. They're not. They're not who I mean, look at what the, how they've got on against Newcastle today. Did we go up against Spurs as well? Um, I think we might have, you know. No, we didn't. No. It was no. uh, a poor kick out from Martinez. No, 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 no. But again, that's a team, team we should have beaten. Yeah, two, two, two very, very soft goals. I mean, the penalty from Cash. I mean, again, what, what we he's kind of got that naivety that some of the players that have had a year in the Premier League have gotten out of their system. He's so naive, Cash. I mean, the amount of times where I think you could probably have tackled him on your feet, but he just loves slight. And I get it, Gil Bear's the same. He loves slight tackle. You, think, you know, that's what you want as a crowd. He gets you up for it, but there's no crowd there. You know, you know what? what I mean? You know what, Drew? And Aaron, 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 Aaron will back us up here. You manage teams, Aaron. What did Smith do wrong after um, the game against Man City? Which is the one golden rule you don't do. Called out Cash, didn't he? Said, give Cash a bollocking in the changing room. Yeah, he said that, yeah, he did yeah. say that. Oh, unbelievable. What's he playing at? Yeah. What's he playing at? Again, stuff like that needs to stay in house. Do you know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. Uh, you, you know, again, for me, people are going mad about Dougie, about Pep saying this, that and the other. He's a fantastic... For me, that's his just... It's a compliment. We think you're a good player, but we're not going to take you. So I think Dougie's as good of not going to get his activation fee. Um, and 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 maybe that's what's what's in the back of his mind. Maybe that's what's to do with his performance. But I know we we spoken months ago and said that Doug is our safety blanket, and our safety blanket's been ripped from underneath our feet. We haven't got that protective um, sort of blanket again, to use the same word, in front of our back four. And I don't know about you, I think we're conceding the same sort of goals as we were last season. Now I do as well. If it weren't, if it weren't for um, even the goalkeepers making a couple of silly mistakes now. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's just probably because of how much he's going being put through to him at the minute. Mm-hmm. Um, we're letting the shot, we're letting shots on uh, shots on our on our goal again, aren't we? Yeah. Which we'd which we'd narrow down at the beginning of the season, but all of a sudden it's in double figures again. We're letting yeah. people shoot left, right, and centre, and we're also letting sides to tap down that right hand side again. Yeah, I mean. Yeah. We, we, we've had a bit of a roundup really about how we're feeling about the Villa you know kind of going on the back of last week uh, I don't think it'd be right for us not to comment obviously the, the circulating of the video of Tyro Mings now it's quite clear who's talking about Ross what I mean what, what's your feelings towards that because again you know it's not the Villa who are publicising that but it, when it gets put out there so publicly I, the, the Villa I fans I saw, it the other, I saw on, the, on Twitter someone's doing a countdown to when Ross Barkley leaves yeah, I'm, I am 100% behind Tyrone. To be fair, uh, I, I I'm fully with him. Uh, what what was what was what was the thing on the field? We didn't know because it was before when Tyrone was was speaking. But there's clearly a, an aggravation there from from Barkley's attitude, Barkley's performances, Barkley's uh, approach to the games. Yeah. You know, we can all see that from the bird's eye view cameras. We can see that. We we, we can see why Tyrone Mings, perhaps a very passionate player. Okay. Mm-hmm. You know, he's, he's made he's made some little mistakes, you know, this season. But he's 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 Villa. He's Villa. He's passionate about playing for this club. Yeah. He's passionate about being a professional footballer, and he is passionate about ensuring that everybody else on that pitch with him, the other ten players around him, are pulling their weight. And Barkley isn't. And I, you know, I think it was a long time ago. Barkley knew that this wasn't happening, mm. and he wasn't going to get this deal. And now he's just lost complete interest. And I'm totally behind Tyrone in in inventing that frustration. You know, Aaron, um, Aaron, do you, do you think do you think Ross said something like "I can't be asked for Mings to make a comment like that"? Then? 
Well, yeah, because Mings's reply was, um, "You should be asked." You should be asked, and then fuck off, Ross. Fuck off, Ross. Yeah, I mean, you know, tensions always high on the field. You know, you expect your players to have tensions that are that are highly strung, particularly if you know farewell down deep down that you're not playing that well, and and people are making mistakes. You know, people get heightened. That that's obvious. But for Mings to quite openly voice that. Yeah. You know, with the with the potential that someone might catch it on camera, there's got to be a serious issue there with Ross. Yeah. And I, I don't I don't doubt for one minute that Jack being out has also made Ross think, well, Jack's out. What's the point? I came here for Jack. You yeah. know, in my yeah. opinion, Ross came for Jack. Ross yeah. Barkley was a Jack Grealish signing and That's probably a whisper into JT's ear. Yeah, definitely, hundred percent is. He's not yeah, a I'm, signing. I mean, the, the, my problem with that is. Um, that, again, I've not earned a lot of money out of football at all by any stretch of the imagination. But I can tell you now, even if, like, sort of towards when I was stopping playing and I was only getting 30, 40 quid a week, if I said to one of my teammates, I can't be asked," I tell you now, they'd have pinned me up against the wall in the, in the changing rooms. Yeah. Now, I, obviously, none of us have played at the level that we're at, but do you think that sort of thing would, would happen? Voiced um, uh, concerns and, and strong language. You, I well, it's it goes, it, Aaron. It goes back to what I've said. Something's fundamentally wrong. I don't think it's a happy changing rooms. In, no, I know it can't be a happy changing rooms for a captain to say that on on, on the pitch. No, no, yeah. and I think there's you know, for for me, there's this there's this expectation that players are having to deal with because we had such a good start. That's one psychological factor that we're we're toiling with week in, week out. And a lot of the players aren't quite able to grasp that yet. You know, that's quite a difficult thing for the boys to grasp. You've got Barkley coming in as a, as a high-end player who, who came with a hell of a lot of expectation, but very little match fitness, very little match confidence, and was thrown in at the deep end. Now, organically, the first two, three games he played, he was very, very good. Very, very good indeed. And we all got a bit excited and peed in our pants, didn't we? Yeah. But his fitness wasn't there. Yeah, his fitness wasn't there. It wasn't really him playing well because all the other players around him were, were kind of giving him this opportunity. He was just playing well because it was a new start. Yeah. Jack's gone. Um, Barkley's linchpin. Barkley's main man. And it's been really difficult for Barkley. He's been dropped by Smith and he's regularly on the bench being replaced by Ramsey and the yeah. camera, you know, in that middle three, however he wants to play it. You know, because you've got to look at it like that, haven't you? Nakamba is effectively replaced Barkley. However you look at that midfield three, somewhere along the line, Nakamba starting and Barkley isn't. You know? No, I, you know well, you, well, you know I love a stat. Um, well, you know, Ross Barkley's stat, he's, he's, not, he's not made one single tackle since he's been with us. That, yeah. that is a wow stat. Jesus. And, he, and he's backing off. He's backing yeah. off. He should be pressuring people. Not one single tackle. Not That's one up. single attempt made. It's shocking. His yeah. passing is woeful. His passing is woeful. As a man that should be playing at the professional level as that glue between what happens in the midfield and up top, he's not he's not providing up top with anything. I don't I, I personally don't think it I think it I think there's a player in there, Ross Barkley. And I've said yeah. openly he's absolute on his day, he's a he's, he's a worldie for me. No doubt. But no but doubt. his but his attitude, that's why no one's touched him, because he can't be asked. If he can't be asked, then I don't want him out of the villa. Yeah, I mean, I thought Ravel Morrison was a talented boy and could have played yeah. regular for 12, 15 years, but his attitude let him down. There's yeah. four corners of a player's diagram uh, par paradigm. Yeah, and Ross's psychology and the way that he plays, his behavior and his approach and his attitude lets him down. So it doesn't matter what's happening in the other three corners, he's balls up. You watch, yeah. you, yeah. you will, he'll watch and end up at West Ham. He'll be a bit, he'll be in his team. But you see, again, again, what I, I was watching um, the Leicester game against Baggies, uh, and 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 it's it's not just because Baggies are, are probably one of the poorer teams, but I watch someone like James Madison, and uh, whether you rate him or you don't, his movement is something that we just haven't got. We just oh. haven't got someone that makes those diagonal runs that sort of right across the back, and then he's off, or and we just haven't got that. I mean, we're so we like. The ball from Martinez gets chipped out to, to target. He brings it down. He goes inside. Then it goes over to Konza. Then it goes over to Cash. Then it came over to Marvellous. Then it goes to Dougie. Then it's, OK, where do I go now? And there's no movement from the number 10. Ollie's kind of running channels, but he doesn't, we don't want him 
any you know any f- further out than than the, than the eighteen yard box, and I just think that we are really missing that that busy number ten. And, and we've said it so many times. We've got the best number ten in the league. Yeah. Whether you want you know if you admit it or not, Jack is the best number ten in the league. And me personally, we'll, we'll and we'll move transition on onto it uh, into to what we need in the in the summer. But me personally, I would be going absolutely balls deep to try and get two proper wingers and put Jack as a number ten and let him because. It, 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 we, we saw it last season. Jack went out wide and two, maybe a month or so, he was fantastic. But then teams just go, well, that's where Jack's playing every week. So we just put two on him. And then he gets marked out the game. Then he has to go back to the middle. If he goes into the middle, he's got that free roam. He can go and do what he wants to do. And let's face it, Jack works as hard as anyone else in our team as well. So you're not missing anything in that midfield if he's playing in the number 10. Just on your point there, Drew, the reason that we did so well up to Christmas was because Jack was playing that free role. Mm -hmm. You might have been put on the left when Sky Sports show you what tactics were playing, but they know bullshit. They got a clue. He was playing a free role. He was told, go wherever you want to go and make shit happen, Jack. And now he's gone. There's no other player that's capable of doing that. And we've still tried to emulate that same rhythm, that same pattern. And the players can't do it. Traore isn't that player. You know, he's a maverick. He's a good player, but he isn't Jack Grealish. No. No, No. Barkley isn't Jack Grealish, unfortunately. Hasn't performed like we, we hoped he would. Um, McGinn, I think, can be quite successful in a number 10 role, but he hasn't got the movement that Jack's got. He hasn't got the, the vision. And McGinn, a lot of the time, makes some dreadful passes. We know. don't know. We, we don't know. Troy is not a good number 10 at the moment because he ain't played him there. But against yeah. stats, stats tell you, against Leon, he was, his stats were better as a number 10 than a winger. Yeah. Oh. So why are we not doing it then, Si? Okay. Because Quick question. Smith, because I'll tell you why, mate, because Smith. He's so stubborn on this bloody formation of four four three. It's unreal, mate. He's got to change it tomorrow. Yeah. He's got to change it tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. Quick, quick question for you both. Um, summer transfer. Chelsea offer us Barkley for five million. Would you take him? No. It's not just five million, is it? It's hundred probably on grand a week. Wages. Yeah, there is that. There is that. I mean, Half it. It, before the game, before. Um, City game without that comment. If he has said, I'm not arsed, that's me, that's him done for me. But before that, I probably would have took him for five million if I'm being honest, because I think he's an improvement on Conor Hurrahain no, when mate. he's playing well. Drew, Aaron's knocked it right on the head. You want, I won't pay a bag of, bag of peanuts for him. I'll tell you one bag of peanuts to him. You know, <laughs> you're getting for a bag of peanuts, but he upsets 200 million pounds worth of changing rooms. Yeah, I point exactly. You What's know, the point? Not- yeah, not, yeah, yeah. When you buy Ross Barkley for five million, you've got his wages per week, which he isn't going to drop because of his. Because of his ego, mm-hmm. and, and and he's and he's ruffling feathers in there. There's yeah. no there's no surprise that the relationship between Jack and McGinn on the field changed when Barkley arrived. Oh, I agree, totally. Yeah, agree. Very, very definitely. Well. No, Drew, I, I think he's a goner. You know, I, I said it right at the beginning of the season that it was alone, and then he go. He has Smiths announced it. I can't yeah. see him signing. I can't see him staying. He'll be pleased to get rid of him, I'm sure. Okay then. Um, so for the rest of the season. Me personally, based on the fact that I think we all know that Barkley's not going to be signing, and I think we've pretty much confirmed it as a club. Do you start leaving him out of the squad and start giving uh, Chooks and Kessler and all those kind of guys a bit of experience? Do you, would, is that what you think we should do? Or Chooks has to play for me, and Aaron will totally agree as well. What not you, Aaron? Over to you, mate. You've, you've been quite vocal about the kids. Yeah, um, I said I said right at the start of the season that Kessler and Chooks would be in and around the first team without, without you know, with a few weeks in and lo and behold, they are yeah. um, both very, very, very talented players. Very, They know what they're doing. They know their roles. And with relegation out the window and there's no chance that we get relegated, I, I say we give them a shout. I say we give them a go. And actually for me, more so than Louis Barry too. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not uh, so sure. Not so I'm, sure not, Louis I'm not sure Louis Barry is going to make it. No, nah, Louis Barry's all round play, mate. He's, he's, he's not great. If, yeah. if you watch it, okay, he's a goal scorer and I'm sure I'm going to get absolute straight for it, but he's all round play for me. Yeah. It, no. he's, got a lot of le- he's got more learning to do in him, Barry. Yeah. Whereas, whereas I'll, t- I'll, t- I'll tell you what, I, I compare well. Barry to, I, I actually think he's like, and, and, and don't shoot me down, he's a bit like Owen. If he doesn't score, you don't see him in the game. Yeah, and, Owen. Owen. Um, Owen. And, and don't get me wrong, me personally, if, if there was a one-on-one in the club for my mortgage, I'm putting Louis Barry on it. I think he's the best finisher in the club. Yeah. I just don't think he's going to make it. I really yeah. don't. Um, I hope I'm wrong. I think he looks like a, a decent kid. He looks like he enjoys it. He loves the club, which is obviously what we want. <laughs> but me, I'm more excited about Chooks. I'm more excited about Kesler. 
And I'm actually quite, I'm more excited about uh, Aaron Ramsey than I am Jacob at the moment as well, from what I'm seeing. But I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm Aaron probably going to get sacked at some point. I'm, I'm, I'm watching like YouTube in the day when England are playing uh, Wales and I'm YouTubing uh, England and Chuke scored that goal. And I, I just thought to myself, at that age level, he he looks like a man playing against boys. He's he's ready for me. He's ready. The kid up front as well. Does he get enough price for me, young? Yeah, Brad. Bradley. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Well, I'll tell you what's quite exciting. That lad that we um, we signed from Norwich, that Shaq Poke, he made his... Ruben, he got onto the Ruben. bench for the, he got onto the be bench for the 18s today because he's been injured since we signed him. So, yeah, And he's a, he's a big lump as well. Um, so I'd love... I, honestly, I would love tomorrow at six o'clock when the team's announced for Chuck to be in that midfield. Because I really think the kid's got it. And I really think from the, the minute go, the kid will do more than what Louise uh, McKean and uh, Ramsey did in the last few games. Well, I'm that excited about him. I think, I think Aaron's already touched on it. Because we've kind of, our season's fizzled a little bit. Your likes of Douglas Louise, whether you like it or not, McGinn. Marv in the midfield, their mentality is like, let's just see the season out. And we're already on the beach a little bit. Chooks is like, I'm a young kid. I've got a chance here to really show something to my manager. Let him go. Let him go and prove himself. You know, and you know, all, all week we've heard that Man City, Man U, Liverpool, Bayern Munich are all looking at him. Well, let's stop those rumours and get him in the first team, and that's him put to bed because he wants to be at this club. Who was your player in a free and Aaron? If he played, McGinn, Chooks. Yeah, McGinn and Dougie, I guess. Um, because they're because they're the players that they're the players that I want to be. You know, par Chooks. I'm I'm saying that because it's, there's nothing to lose now. But you know, two of those players are the players I want to see in that midfield. They're the yeah. players that I want to be thriving. Do you always have this niggly? Do you always have this niggly doubt though that you think McGinn can't play with him or McGinn can't play with that player? McGinn can't play with this player. Always got that niggly doubt in my head that. McGinn can't play with the certain players in the team. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, like, with, communicate, communicate, yeah, it's just... With Tooks and Dougie in there, though, McGinn could play because he'd be given yeah. that 10-ish role and, and have that freedom because Tooks isn't a number 10, is he? He's a number eight. Yeah, he's, he's a proper he's a, number he's a, eight. He's a, he's, a, he's a proper central midfield wagon. He yeah. is. He is the middle man and he's got so much ability. His vision is unreal. He sees things three, four, five passes before they've even happened. Yeah. Uh, and I don't see a reason why he shouldn't be in contention. And, and, and he's also the kind of player we're going to be looking at the summer. For that, that physique, that, yeah. uh, that yeah. ball, ball range, uh, yeah. retention, uh, uh, the defensive player, a complete number eight. Yeah. If it's a complete player, we need at the Villa. Yeah. Uh, and it's quite, it's not, not a guy at Brighton, basically. Yeah. I watched yeah. Gungadun uh, from Man City. Is it Gunga, Gungandun? Yeah, yeah. You know yeah. What I mean, yeah, he, I'll forgive he, you for he, the pronunciation. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <but> <laughs> what, what he did for Man City against us the other day is what we need in that middle. He was class, he was absolutely class. Mm -hmm. I, I, I haven't really paid much attention to him, particularly at City, and it was the first game I could not take my eyes off him. I could not take my eyes off what he was doing for that for that midfield. And he was everywhere. He was unbelievable, and that's what we need to try and get. I was uh, I was too busy counting the pigeons to be honest with you. Mm. It was I'd lost the interest. <laughs> you know what? It, it... I counted ten pigeons though. There you go. <laughs> then I, from from my point of view, like you say, we we keep on banging the drum about the model of player that we're looking to sign, and like you say, we've got one in our academy that he's built like he's built like a man now. He's, he's, he's a big lad. Um, he's, he's scoring or assisting week in, week out now. What have we got to lose? We haven't, mate. Because our front, like we've said, the biggest problem is our midfield free. He can't, he cannot be any worse than Marvellous and Kemba. I can tell you that now. He cannot be any worse. He can't be any worse than Dougie at the minute. Um, give, it, give the lad a shot for me. Uh, but, you know, I, I would absolutely, like you say, I think that would give the fans a massive lift to see someone like that in our team um, come uh, six o'clock tomorrow. He hasn't played. He hasn't played with Delaney all week. The last two weeks, he's not been in the team at all, has he? So it's interesting. It's interesting. Yeah, well, we play. Uh, we've got a big game Tuesday, haven't we? Though? Yeah, the FA, the FA Youth Cup. Um, yeah. All right, then. So let's move. What What do we need in the in the summer to go from being a tenth in the league to pushing for sixth? It's, ch it's changed for me. It's changed from the beginning of the season, thinking maybe three or four, mm. to now being greedy. I actually think we need six or seven players. 
Um, uh, we're desperate, desperate now. And I never thought we'd, I'd say this. We are desperate for uh, a complete midfielder, a complete number eight. Yeah. Um, we're desperate for wingers. I don't think we're so desperate for a forward player. Um, we will get one, but, you know, we've got to wait for what, what Wes is going to do. We've got Watkins, but we're just desperate, desperate. In fact, you know what? We're desperate for three midfielders. So would yeah. you be happy if he bought in a, a proper striker? Let's just throw a name out there. Someone like even Tony or a Tammy Abraham, just two names and then put Watkins out left and then got a proper winger on the right and then Jack in the middle? Or do you think we need two proper wingers? I think we need two two proper wingers. I think we need a, a proper number eight. I think we need a proper number 10. And I actually, I'd love Tammy back in the vid and I've vocally said that. I don't think Tammy is the answer and I don't think ta- we will go for Tammy. Do you not think? No, no, but we need... <laughs> We need a player which is versatile up front, and that's what Smith will want. He'll want someone who can play wide. He'll want someone who can play the number nine, and he'll want someone that can just play number ten. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know exactly where you're coming from. I just thought, like I say, I think for me, I think it's shown that McGinn can do a job fitting in the number ten if Jack's injured. I'd, I'd love to have Jack as out and out number ten for next season, and then McGinn's his backup. But also, Jack, we know McGinn can can also play other positions in the midfield. I think we need two two midfielders, and you know I, I looked on the other day, and I think I'm, I put it into the group. You know, you got that Adamola Lookman. He's a free agent in the summer. I don't know if they've got an extension, but if that's the case, he's going to be coming. He, he won't be the sort of price that you should be looking at. So maybe sort of ten million. Um, Mc, McNeil, I think you'd probably get him for about twenty five yeah, million. Um, Make Loftus, it priority. Yeah. Loftus Cheek uh, again for depth. For, you know, I think he, when he came off against us for Fulham, I think the game changed and he's a free agent in the summer. Again, I don't know if they've got an extension on that. Um, And then I, you know, I genuinely think we need to make a statement as a striker. And, and, you know, I know people, oh, but you're so unfair on Ollie Watkins. Ollie Watkins started as a left forward. That's what he started as. That's his out and out position. And I think you can see that because when Watkins plays, he drifts wide. And he looks better when he get, picks the ball up out wide and he's running at players, I think so, anyway. Um, Do you know what worries me, though? What worries me with, with Watkins, and it got, it got proven the other night, is when Davies came on, you played two up front, so you stick, you stick the two up, you know, a big big man, little man as such, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Watkins kept drifting wide again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's and pointless, that's, and that's it's pointless point. having two up front, isn't it? But it's pointless that's my point. That's why I don't think he'll go for a number nine. I think he'll give Wes a chance. I think Davis will ship on there and I think he'll get, uh, like I say, a guy who can play in three different positions. Yeah. Me, fact, me personally. Another Ollie Watkins five yeah. years. Ago. Basically, mate. Yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah I mean, me personally, I, I don't think Smith fancies Wes. I think Wes and Keenan Davis will both go on loan. Oh, I agree. I think Samata, uh, obviously, I think they've, they've activated the six million on yeah, him, well, which, is, which is great. So that, that's, that's that done and dusted. So at least we've got a bit of money coming in. You got Engels will go, Dougie potentially twenty seven million for. I think um, I think Garzy might just hold on by the skin of his teeth because of Trezeguet's injury. If not, he's gonna. If he goes early doors, you know two wingers are coming in. I think he'll be the first out the door, mate. I hope, think Garzy. Hope, I think Garzy's gone. Again, for me, I, I've said this before, and, I, and I'll, I'll, I'm happy to get slated for it. I think he's one of the most talented players at our club. He's just got no heart. And for me, I'd prefer to have someone like Trezeguet that you're gonna get. Work rate, work rate, work rate. Might not be the most talented, but you know what you're getting from every game. Then Trezor, then then Garzi that you think he's just jumped out of that tackle. Do you know what I mean? Mm, I agree. I agree. Al Garzi is like Marmite, and you, you you love him one day and, and you hate him the other. I mean, the only thing is he absolutely loves playing against the baggies, so <laughs> he scores every time we play him, doesn't he? Yeah, I can, well, I can see him. I can see him starting tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well I ain't gonna say. I ain't gonna say. We've got a really, <laughs> we got we've got a really, we've got a religious problem at seven o'clock tomorrow, don't we? Uh, and yeah, he, and he's yeah, and we know what the religious problem is. You know, we've got playing at seven o'clock. He's going to be absolute on his. He's going to be on his knees, isn't he? So this is what I think might have, might go in Kessler's favour. I think he's going to play gets, armor though, as well. Yeah. I think I think I think Kessler gets a start tomorrow just based on fasting. He's just going to be not drinking or eating until seven o'clock at night. A lot a to chance. expect from a top athlete. To be fair, it is a lot to expect. 
against the Albion, mate, who, who, who want to win the game. Yeah. yeah. We'll have two, we've got basically two players out of that team, haven't you, really? And what, um, Ron will be having uh, some players drop as well because they've got they've got a few African Muslim boys up the top, haven't they? I think they I have. imagine that. I think that Dinier is. Din- for... Dinier is, yeah. He'll be, he'll be fine. He don't, he don't move much anyway. He's a bit of a lump, but he's a good player. You know what? You know what? Yeah. It, 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 I said this. If he could finish, and I know that's a big thing for a striker, he'd be a £40 million because he links the play so well and he's a big lump. Um, he reminds me as a poor man's Carew, to be fair. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so in terms of the summer, I want three names that you think we, we, we could potentially go after? McNeil, for me. Yeah. I've vocally said that. I think we've all said that. Um, I'd love to get the guy from Brighton, the number eight, Basuma, is it? Basuma, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll throw another name at you from Brighton. Uh, is it Tromad, the number 11? I know the one is you're talking about, Trubard. yeah. Trubard, yeah. Cracking player. Absolutely yeah. crack. I think he'd be brilliant for us. Yeah. So you got three players there. But then, then any other, but any other argument, and I, and I do get the we've got a lot of money to spend. Maybe go high. We need to go. We think think outside the. I'll go higher. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I actually think Basuma is going to be one of them that kind of oh, is a bit, van, Basuma, a, bit a bit of a Van Dyke where he kind of comes just because he doesn't play for a top team now. I think like he will go on to be a top top player. I would absolutely love I'd Basuma. Smash it. Smash I'd love it, that. I'd love Elise from Reading. Uh, I think he'd come. I think he'd come relatively cheap as well because he's he's not got. Um, Mate, his form left. his form's really dipped. His form's dipped the last um, seven or eight games. You know, I think I think that's to do with the fact that I think Reading are dropping out the. The, the contention though I think Reading as a team have been poor for the last couple of weeks mate I really do and and don't forget he's 18 as well so we'd compare him let's compare him for apples or apples so that's Chooks so they're both the same age same sort of stature playing the same I mean sign him and send him straight back to Reading on loan for another season no problem he's got one year left on his contract so he's not going to be mega bucks and then if Villa offered that sort of a deal we'll, we'll be in the front running to, to sign him Smith's in a catch-22, and he? If he gets that kind of player, he can use that as an excuse, kind of, oh, he'll, imp- he'll improve. But I think Smith needs to hit the hit the, hit the hit the hit it running straight away. So he's yeah. got to go for proven quality. And, and pro- you, uh, for me, uh, Max Maxime San L- Allen from... Oh, Newcastle. yeah. I'd love him, but he's made a glass, mate. Yeah, he that's is. my issue that with him as well, quality. yeah. He is quality. Him, him. Um... Uh, I like Basuma, but I also like that Nguise from Fulham as well. He's another good little player, mm. another good player, a bit like Basuma. Yeah. Um, and I think I think at the minute it would be nice to have something down the left hand side um, with Matty Matty target if, if anything goes a bit tits up for Matty. And I think someone like Rico Henry might be a good shout. You yeah. know, not too not too much in the bank, but knows Dean Smith very well. Dean knows him. He knows what to expect from him, and he's ready for that step up now. I think. But I agree with um, I agree with T. I think. I think we will be very surprised with the targets. Um, although I think there is a focus on British talent, I think that is is kind of ingrained in our transfer policy. I think there'll be a few from abroad uh, with big money price tags to come in and, and, and kind of set the standard, if you like. Yeah. Um, the, the, the difference as well, lads, between the last two seasons is we know we're safe. We know what league we're in. Yeah. Deals are... If anybody been watching this podcast doesn't think that deals are in place already right then they're at cuckoo land because i think a lot of, a lot of players will be signed and sealed and just waiting for the season to end Absolutely. and now i think also flip of the coin as well i think a lot of players in that current team know they've gone oh, yeah, and, uh, roughly, roughly a few feathers in the changing rooms well you can't be asked why so won't be asked uh, and i think i think we'll have a few surprises going from the villa as well which have mm. not been not been mentioned yeah. um so let 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 let's stick see. your neck on the line, T. Give us give us a name. No, nah, I'm not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you off the I'll, t- I'll tell you off the video, mate. Uh, what do you put me right? Aaron, he's put me right on the spot there, <laughs> mate. I'm not in the know, remember? <laughs> no, I know you're not, mate. I oh, know. No, uh, uh, okay. So I think yeah, we we've wrapped up Villa pretty well, but I, I don't Please think. Do. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't think we could. Uh, I don't think we could start this podcast off without sort of uh, being a bit topical and talking about what's been going on this week. Because, and I'm going to start. And I'm, I'm honestly, I lost a bit of sleep the first night. And I know that sounds pathetic, but I'm such a football fan. Um, and obviously, we're talking about this Euro- European Super League. Um, but you know what? I lost a little bit of sleep over the absolute arrogance and cheek of Tottenham and Arsenal. 
you know what? I'll sleep. Do you know what? I'll sleep over, mate. Go on. Give all the European European nights to Villa. We're going to have. I was so excited. Let, let them do it. Sort of. Well, it is that I get. The, I get where you're coming from, but from my I point of view, times. Uh, from, well, I mean, the thing with it is, I saw a, cu- a couple of clubs, and there were like Wolves were saying, "Oh, well, we've won the." 15, 16 Premier League. I was thinking, hold on a second. We won the first ever Premier League. Then 1992. Um, but, you know, from my point of view, and, and, and you're still hearing rumblings from your Real Madrid man saying that it's not dead in the water yet and he still thinks it's something to be said on it. I mean, what's your thoughts? What's your thoughts, lads? I um, I actually thought it was going to happen. Oh, I did. Uh, and do you know what? I still think it will happen, but in two or three years' time in a different format. In a totally different format. I also think um, um, fundamentally, again, I said the word fundamentally, is I'm a Villa fan, not a football fan anymore because football's gone. And out of six will not get punished is an absolute bloody disgrace. Because they ain't going to get punished, are they, really? No. I, 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 do, I actually think that, I think they will. I think they will get oh, punished. They, will. Hey, they haven't got the balls. They haven't got the they balls, got the balls they've, all, they've all withdrawn the backhand corrupted money deals. Yeah. They haven't withdrawn because they feel the wrath of the fans. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of talk about fans have won the victory. Partly, I think, and I'll get I'll get slated for this, but partly I think the fans are to con- you know have been the contribution factor. But there's also a lot of backhand deals. UEFA are as corrupt as the ESL setup is. Where's the World Cup being held? That's how corrupt the game yeah. is. Yeah, see, you know, and this is what we're dealing with. So there's so much, it's it's all about money. It's yeah. all about being being the best of uh, you know I, what I, I found, found quite ironic. My honest opinion, mate. I, I, I found it disgraceful. I think I used yeah. the word disgraceful and vile about twenty thousand times on Twitter. Yeah. I think I think the thing that I found really ironic and the and the blue eyed boys at the minute and let's go and celebrate with them too and grab yourself a beer tonight, lads. You've done us proud. It's two Sky employees in Carragher and Neville. And let's face it, them parents squeaky clean. Them per <laughs> I mean you know, Carragher is obviously the, one of probably the most, uh, uh, for me, he shouldn't be on TV anyway for what he did, uh, yeah. spitting out of his car. Oh, but great. then, you know, Gary Neville, he's on a huge agenda, that bloke. So he's absolutely majorly uh, vocal about everything that's wrong in football. Well, hold on a second. Let's all talk about your best pal gigs. What he's done this week. Why haven't you spoke about that? Because it doesn't fit your agenda. It doesn't fit that your pocket's going to get hurt if they th- it, by talking about that. And and let's face it, that's what it all comes down to. All boils down to whose pocket's getting hurt, and that's all it is. Yeah, and you know what? The biggest thing that really bothered me, and, and Patrick Bamford was bang on when he did his interview after the game. The biggest problem for me is that why did we why do we not cause as much fuss when when racism is rife in football right now? Since when was it acceptable that setting up a new Playboy League? was more important than worrying about the disgraceful racism that we deal with in football all over well, the world. Very, very quickly about the racist card. The racist card it, it really is disgusting and it winds me up. And you're getting kids on Twitter who think it's fashionable um, to, to, to call some out racist, which it's got to stop. This whole on the knee thing and all that, it, it's trolls. It, it's trolls of day, isn't it? it, it, it it's another subject for another day and it winds me up. You've got all these trolls doing the racist remarks and all that. But why they're doing that is because it's highlight, isn't it? Yeah. And it's, it's, it's disgusting. And back, back to this European thing, I lost sleep, mate, because uh, I lost sleep because I was excited. Let them go. Let them go. And for what that bloody Henry said at Liverpool to say, oh, well, you know, I didn't go with this reaction. Ask the fans first. Mm-hmm. Ask the yeah. fans first. You know, ask your shareholders first. Ask your season ticket. Send a letter to your season tickets for a for a poll. Don't just go and do something. Yeah, I because mean they're not here for football, are they? They're here. No, for no. I mean, you you know it's you know it's a bad bad situation when PSG are the good guys. Yeah, yeah but if you don't think there's a clubs well, on the wings waiting for it to come into the league, mm. uh, and we're very clever, then we're all very. We're all the, yeah, we're in a small world. There's, there was teams were waiting for a reaction. Oh yeah, brilliant idea. Let's do it. Next thing you know, let's let's join. I'm pretty sure that PSG would have been one. I'm pretty sure that West Ham United would have been one, and I'm pretty sure that Everton Football Club would have been one. Yeah, allegedly. Yeah, I mean, like I say, I think for me it was just it, it was just the complete and utter greed, and and I think again clubs started giving it. Yeah, you know, I think we saw Chelsea. We saved football. And all the, you know, Carragher coming out and going, fair play to City first to pull out and blah, blah. No, 
hold on a second. If there wasn't such a kickoff as there was from the fans, they would still be in this Euro Super League. And let's get that right from the start right. because, right. you know, they haven't done anything right other than the fact is they've bottled it. They have bottled it. And and you know what as well, lads? Is, you know, the one team that's come out stinking with this and, their, and for me and their fans, Spurs. Yeah. The fans haven't protested for the ownership out. They didn't really, weren't really, really vocal about going into the Super. Oh yeah, let's just let it happen. I think, I think, do you know what Spurs have really gone down in my estimation? You know why? And I'll tell you, and I've got again, I've got a bit of a theory on this. And the two teams I think have been the most silent about it. N- not the fans, in fairness, at Arsenal, but the club. Hmm. So Tottenham and Arsenal are the two clubs that are more the most concerned about uh, about West Ham, about Leicester, about Villa, about Wolves that are knocking on their doors. Um, and I, I think they know that their their grip on that top six or the the big six, shall we call it, is slipping. And I think they're the two teams that thought we need to slip away from this and get our money back. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's their big that you know that's where they've came out looking absolute full. Yeah, fair play, fair place to the Arsenal fans. They protested the massive oh, night. I've not seen any. I've not seen anything from Spurs. Have you, Aaron? I've not seen nothing nope. from Spurs. Nope. Nothing. No. Nope. I was really pleased to see the camaraderie and the togetherness of fans from all over the country, yeah. all over the yeah. world. You know, yeah. Fans that clubs weren't involved in it and fans that clubs were, you know, I thought it was great. And I, it was a real powerful thing. I had more conversations with United fans and uh, Liverpool fans that day than I, than I ever have. Yeah. And not once did we ever use a bad word to each other. Do you know what I mean? It was nice. Um, it's, fu- it's funny though, United fans, you know, I don't think I've seen one. United fan from Manchester, they're all from London. Oh, no, yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> yeah. Well, let, if that's what we need to do, mate, I'm, I'm starting a protest for VAR as well. Then let's get, let's get that gone. Well, next. That, that's, the, that's the other subject for another day, VAR. What a complete joke VAR is. Yeah. Okay, right. lads. Um, what I'll do is let's start off, uh, sorry, finish off with a bit of prediction then for Villa V Baggies. As. Uh... I'd love to see us win it, mate. We have to win it. Um, but if we don't turn up with what we discussed today, I think it could easily be a 2-1 West Brom or, or a very difficult 2-2 draw. But we need to win it. We need to win it. You know, on, on the performances that we put in the last two, three months, uh, there's not a lot of hope for tomorrow. <laughs> but but we need to win and, and hopefully they'll pull one out of the bag. Yeah. Changes the, changes the formation, we smash them. Absolutely smash them tomorrow. He sticks with a rigid 4-4-3. Yeah. Oh no, nah. we lose. Yeah, yeah I, I, again, I'm a bit on the fence with it as well. If if it's four three three, I'm going one nil baggies. Um, I think it's four 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 two. I think we're doing two nil. Or oh, it could be another boring Wolves game. Yeah, nil we, nil. Me personally, it we've got to win. It, it you know for getting fans back on side for momentum for getting back into the top half of the league. So much you know, as much as it's yeah, we've progressed. Yeah, but we have, but we still got seven games left. Biggest still game of season. Seven games left. Biggest game of season. So well, there's some big games in there as well. Do you know what I mean? There's some big games in there. So and winnable yeah, ones as well, by the way. Finish, should we? We're finishing with Chelsea on the last day, aren't we? Yeah. But well, again, we could be Everton yet. Yeah. Well, this is the yeah. thing, yeah. you know, you've got you've got to remember we win tomorrow. Uh, we got a, we've got to play Everton twice with a game in hand. Well, here's a theory. Here's a theory. So do you think the broadcasters I think, you know, hang on, let's just hold, let's hold fire for the uh, Villa Everton game because it could be a European. Just, just throwing it out there. It seems a bit odd how it's not being rescheduled. Yeah, yeah. not if they've been watching the Villa recently, mate. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be announced as soon as we can't finish this, isn't it? Yeah. So, uh, but listen, we'll wrap it up there. Um, appreciate it, guys. Uh, if you could like, share, and subscribe, Villa if you, want, if, you, if you want us back. <laughs> yeah. And we'll be back again soon, eh, Drew? We will yeah. be. We will yeah. be, yeah. Thanks um, for organising, Drew. Thanks for organising. Very no good problem man. at all. Good man. Love you all.